To po angielsku. Dobra. So, he hello, comrades. Today we will speak very quickly with Mateusz Piskorski. Uh, Mateusz Piskorski now is ha have a lot of problems uh, because uh, two days ago he translated the meeting with the refugees in Poland, uh, Ukrainian refugees. With uh, there was a meeting with um, vice uh, the the wife of the president Duda, Agata Duda. And Mateusz, uh, say what is about Russophobia and about attack in your person? Well, I uh, was asked uh, by one of the centers here in Poland to help uh, uh, with the translation for the refugees from Ukraine. By speaking about refugees, I mean uh, children and women, you can see them on the pictures children and women who came from uh, Ukraine because of the military conflict there. Mm, I'm not talking about the people, I, I want to stress that, about a, lo a lot of people who come here from Ukraine who are, uh, you know, uh, quite wealthy and can, get, can, can take care of themselves without any assistance. I'm just helping the people in real need by translating, by organizing the supplies for them and so on. We have uh, more than 1,700,000 uh, refugees now and among them I guess that around 50% uh, are people who are in real need of assistance, of help, of translation of uh, all the other uh, aid uh, one could uh, imagine. So I'm into that. Also, as you know, as you might know, I'm a uh, uh, let's say I represent quite a different opinion about the, the so-called uh, conflict or the so-called war in Ukraine we are witnessing now. So my opinion from the geopolitical view is totally different than that of the mainstream. Nevertheless, I think that uh, from the point of view of, uh, you know, uh, humanitarian issues and uh, of uh, uh, some kind of being trying to be useful in that uh, crisis situation now in Poland. Uh, I do uh, all my best to assist and help the refugees. And, uh, well, last Friday I was uh, invited by one of the centers for the refugees here in Poland. They asked me to come uh, urgently, to come immediately to the center because they were expecting a guest a uh, non-Russian speaking guest, guest who wanted to talk to the refugees. They uh, hadn't precised who uh, was going to be the guest, so I didn't know who is going to come there. And when, uh, when I was already there, when I already arrived at the refugee center, uh, after uh, just a few minutes, uh, the wife of the Polish president came which was uh, actually very strange for me because uh, I know the diplomatic protocol and that I know that uh, such people who are, let's say, uh, the high-level officials, as she as the first lady is in Poland, according to the Polish law, uh, have their own interpreters, have their own uh, translation, a kind of professional translation. And uh, that was very weird for me that... Uh, they used uh, a random man as me, a volunteer, uh, for such a kind of translation. And I would not, I, I wanted to stress that I, that I would not be ready to translate for the wife of the Polish president. I was translating for the refugees. And that was the thing I was doing for them. Not for the Polish VIP. Yes? But as uh, uh, they wanted and they asked me for that, I did that for the refugees. I didn't show it anyway, anywhere, because uh, I mean, I mean, for me, as you may know, it's not a, a title for a kind of PR or anything like that. I, I'm not keen on meeting people like uh, Agatha Kornhauser Duda. It's uh, not, uh, let's say, my uh, to say the least. So uh, really, that was that was something. That was something uh, quite, uh, quite uh, amazing, even astonishing for me. Uh, nevertheless, I did my job. Uh, I did the best I could for uh, translating for the refugees for two hours or so. 
and uh, on the next day uh, it became apparent that the website of the Polish president, uh, the official website of the Polish president, uh, has uh, published uh, the, the photos, uh, the photos uh, depicting me uh, during this meeting, and then everything started. I mean. Uh, the Polish mainstream journalists started to call me and uh, they tried to organize a kind of scandal around the fact that I was there and that I was, according to them, uh, translating, uh, the, uh, translating the uh, Polish first lady, yes, which was, which was for them, of course, shocking as well. Uh, nevertheless, uh, mm, uh, a big scandal appeared then, of course, they were blaming me that I'm not entitled to help the refugees because of my political views and because of my past. Then I was, uh, then I was uh, again accused of uh, a lot of things like, you know, espionage, you know, you know, the whole case against me, which is going on here in Poland, as they perceive me as a Russian and even Chinese spy without having any evidence for that. And they are just uh, repressing me for voicing my views and opinions, my political views and opinions. And so uh, everything was very, very weird. Uh, there was a huge attack of the media against me. Uh, some Polish politicians, I want to stress that even a deputy speaker of the Polish parliament announced in the media that one should have a look at my origin. You know, they, he suggested in a Nazi way that I have some, I don't know, Russian or Jewish or any other, uh, which, which he doesn't like, yes, uh, origins, you know. Uh, so uh, he, he made some allusions to my nationality, to my ethnicity, yes, and uh, telling that people of certain origins uh, should not be admitted to the public, uh, should be eliminated from the public space in Poland, yes which is actually a Nazi uh, announcement. I'm going to sue this guy. His name is uh, Zgorzelski. He represents uh, the Agrarian Party of Poland. Uh, I want to sue this guy as a Nazi and racist who is calling for a racist and uh, Nazi-like discrimination in Poland. And all those neo-Nazis in uh, mainstream media uh, then in Poland came out, they started to attack me, they started to attack my uh, family members and so on and so on. So I just want to uh, tell you about that because uh, Poland now, when it comes to the rhetorics uh, towards the Russians, but not only towards the Russians, also towards the people who are uh, thinking differently than the Polish mainstream, Poland becomes a truly Nazi state. And uh, I'm not afraid to, to tell that because it's true. I mean, the people are calling uh, for, uh, you know, aggression, uh, appealing uh, to physical attacks and supporting phys physical attacks at uh, people, physical aggression against people who are uh, not sharing their views and who are supposedly Russians, yes? Uh, this is uh, not only my case. The Nazis in, in Poland is quite obvious when you look at this uh, Nazi bastard Kowojejak, who tried to present himself as a people's leader, but now we see him on the Polish-Belarusian border, blocking the transports and uh, you know humiliating the Russian drivers who are driving the, the trucks uh, to Russia, the trucks with uh, uh, you know uh, medical aid, with uh, basic supplies for the Russian ordinary people, not for Putin, but for ordinary people there in Russia. So. Or Jack became a Nazi as well. But over that, and some people of the Polish left thought that he is a, a guy who will change something, a, 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 you know, a game changer in the Polish politics and so on. So now almost every mainstream Polish, Polish politician speaks like a Nazi, behaves like a Nazi, and uh, they do that not only towards uh, the Russians, as I told, but they do the same uh, with the people here in Poland, with the Polish citizens who do not share their views. They are calling for violence, they are calling for eliminating the people from their public life, 
they are doing everything uh, which uh, was done in the 30s by the Nazis uh, in the Third Reich. They are uh, doing that, and some, some of the Russians actually, maybe you know a Russian band, very well-known band, uh, Leningrad, uh, and it's leader Sergei Shnurov, who, who has lately recorded a great song, uh, a great song. He is not, by the way, he is not a supporter of Putin. He's a critic of Putin, by the way, uh, I mean Shnurov. And uh, nevertheless, he recorded a great song where he compares uh, the Russians in the contemporary West and the attitude of the contemporary West, including Poland, unfortunately, to the attitude that was uh, uh, towards the Jews uh, in the 30s in, uh, in the Third Reich. Uh, so it's a kind of uh, Nazi attitude. And there are no more doubts that uh, the huge corporations including IT corporations like Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I just remind you, the Meta, Meta Corporation has um, uh, suspended its rules when it comes to the so-called hate speech. And uh, they now allow the hate speech against the Russians, yes? They have officially, it was the Reuters communicate, uh, the Reuters agency communicate, where we learned that uh, Meta Corporation is going to allow the hate speech, even the calls for killing the Russians, for physically eliminating the Russians, not only the politicians, but also the Russian, the ordinary Russian people. Yes, so uh, we are turning closer and closer to a kind of... So I, I think in a few words, that's, that's, that's what I can say about that. And could you say a few words about your case? Because you were uh, arrested six years ago and in six years all the time they accuse you for something, but uh, you are not... Uh, Hello, I can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I want that you explain the people from the... Uh, which don't know your case, uh, that... Uh, Uh, that three years you were in in arrest and all the time you are waiting you are waiting for uh, you are not condemning uh, condemn if you could speak a, a little bit low oh, i think that now you don't have internet now something is wrong with the speakers no oh As you see, Mateusz, uh, now uh, he is in car and he is not in uh, his... Uh, I hope that there will be no problem in the road. Uh, normally, uh, it's uh, for people who don't know the situation uh, for uh, last uh, two days in every media, they speak... Uh, oh, you are back. I'm, I, I'm here again, yes. Yes, could, could you could, could you explain why what is your situation that you are accused for something which don't, don't exist in Polish law and the most important that you are you are innocent nobody you will never uh, 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 you they never find you guilty. Of course, six years ago they accused me of uh, uh, trying to influence the public opinion in Poland which is not a crime because every one of us uh, more or less influences the public opinion by voicing our uh, ideas, by voicing our interpretations and our views. Uh, so it was, uh, I think, the first case like that uh, in uh, contemporary Poland, not only in Poland, by the way, but also uh, in uh, Europe. That was a kind of new practice, which was, i would say purely authoritarian, yeah? and uh, what happened then, uh, well, nothing happened, I mean, since six years, I was, I was arrested for three years, they kept me uh, in custody for three years, trying to break me, trying to, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, make me commit suicide and so on, uh, but uh, I managed, and I'm, I'm, uh, Since three years, almost three years, I'm uh, uh, not anymore imprisoned. Uh, anyway, the trial theoretically goes on. 
although no one no one sees the end and the finish of this trial, and uh, they use a uh, huge range of restrictions against me, like uh, you know they uh, banned me from traveling abroad from Poland, so I have to sit in this country all the time. I cannot visit uh, people who are close for me abroad and so on. So uh, everything is uh, theoretically going on. Also, I perfectly know that, uh, well, it's not only my opinion, but also the opinion of uh, the working group of uh, United, United Nations, the Commissioner for uh, Human Rights in the United Nations, uh, that uh, what I have done and what, I, what I'm accused for is not a crime, according to the law. Uh, and it's not espionage, as they try to tell and they claim publicly. Uh, so it has nothing to do with espionage because, as we all know, espionage is passing a secret information to an intelligence of a foreign country. I did it have, uh, I mean, they, they are not accusing me of passing any kind of information. They are accusing me of talking publicly the things which uh, they don't, wouldn't like to hear and that are, let's say, in contradiction with their official ideology. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the point. And... Uh, well, of course, I, I want to stress that uh, everything is getting worse and worse in Poland uh, because uh, I told you that uh, when I was repressed uh, and so on, I was, I was as a political scientist, uh, claiming that Poland became an authoritarian regime. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we are moving closer and closer toward uh, the Nazi type of totalitarianism. Why? Because uh, now you don't, you, you you not only have to sit silent and, and, and speak nothing which is controversial from the political point of view, but you have to support their line, their line of, uh, um, in, uh, let's say, foreign policy, of internal policy and so on. Because if you don't uh, publicly support their uh, position, they are going to call you a traitor, they are going going to exclude you from, from the community and so on. This is happening now in Poland. Uh, this plus the Nazi rhetoric of uh, some leading Polish politicians and uh, media. This is what is going on now. And uh, thus we, had, had, we have had a kind of evolution from authoritarian system to a kind of Nazi-like uh, Nazi uh, totalitarian. And the worst f thing in this uh, in this is this this person they call themselves that they are friends of the Ukraine, but uh, when they need to help, uh, uh, they they didn't uh, they don't speak Russian. Uh, they only speak about uh, we we are with Ukraine and they they are where uh, have this flag Ukrainian flag. And you like a person who who in you you take your time and your skill you speak russian and uh, uh, without you these people in poland now they are uh, totally uh, without help because uh, there are not so many people now in, in who speak who speak russian because uh, because of this propaganda in last 10 years or 20 years when everybody who speak russian uh, they they are accused for some stupid things and now uh, you are helping them and because you're helping the refugees, normally they need to give you order or medal or something like this, they, they, that you are a good guy. Uh, because you help the refugees, they, 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 they uh, want your death or something like this. Of course, but uh, you have to know that they don't care about uh, the refugees, they don't care about the Ukrainians. It's only a kind of uh, geopolitical aim here, and uh, as as you know, they are supplying the weapon to the zone of the conflict, which means that they want to fight the Russians until the last Ukrainian, as uh, one said. Yes. So, uh, by supplying the weapons to uh, to the zone of military conflict, they are uh, now doing everything to, uh, let's say. Uh, practically eliminate, physically eliminate the Ukrainian uh, the Ukrainian nation as such, yes? Uh, this is very weird, yes? Uh, 
I also really hope because I really respect the Ukrainians as, as a nation with their history and their traditions. So I really hope that uh, some of the Nazi-like politicians in Poland will not try to uh, impose the Polish culture on the Ukrainians who are now refugees and who are going to stay here for a longer time. I mean, uh, this is another problem because a lot of people in Poland are uh, treating a lot of experts, let's say uh, journalists, uh, are treating the, the Ukrainians, the coming Ukrainians, as a kind of biological mess which could fill the demographical deficit of Poland. Yes? So they don't treat them as, as uh, people coming from different culture, as uh, people who should be able to uh, go back home after the conflict finishes, but they are treating them also as a kind of uh, biological human mess to fill uh, the demographic crisis, which which is of course not in their interests of capitalism, yes, of a kind of colony capitalism. So they want the cheap labor force to stay here. They don't want the Ukraine Ukraine as as a country to be rebuilt, reconstructed, and reborn on the new uh, on the new uh, basis in the future. They want those people to stay here, and they want they want the territory of Ukraine to become a kind of new Afghanistan. Uh, kind of fallen state in the center of Europe. That is their goal. So they don't think don't think that the journalists, the media, the mainstream media care about the refugees. It's it's you, it's me, it's some left wing people here in Poland who are caring uh, actually. And a lot of ordinary people by the way, I think that a lot of Polish people, ordinary people, not uh, people who are into any kind of politics, but just ordinary women and men are really supporting and helping uh, the refugees, and I'm proud of them. I hope that they will do that. As I did that with any with any hope for any you know uh, reward for that and, and so on. I don't need their rewards. I will be also trying to help to continue my help uh, for the poor people, for the women and children who are coming here and uh, trying to, to find a shelter during the war. So, so this, is the, this is the point, I think. So f f thank you, Ma Mateusz. Um, uh, all all solidarity for 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 you, for uh, for your family, for all people who are attacked now because uh, they know you, they they collaborate with you. Uh, I am with you here, and uh, I don't know what what I have to do, what I can do, but. Uh, I I know that it is a big scandal and uh, and this is uh, this is madness what is now in Poland and uh, uh, don't forget that maybe uh, uh, that there are some people in Poland who who support you in, in this time. Hello? Mateusz Piskorski is frozen now. As you see, this is not the best uh, con condition for this interview. Okay, comrades, so I think that we, we can we can finish. Uh,